I'm an important engine, replied Gordon. Important engines need plenty of coal. A freight train, a freight train, a freight train. I can't do it. I'm not happy. I'm in disgrace. The shame of it, the shame of it, oh, the shame of it. Why are you complaining all the time? Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything. I shall complain whenever I want. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He's a fussy little engine, too, always pulling coaches about, ready for the big engines to take on long journeys. And when trains come in, he pulls the empty coaches away so that the big engines can go and rest. Thomas thinks no engine works as hard as he does. He loves playing tricks on them, including Gordon, the biggest and proudest engine of all. Thomas likes to tease Gordon with his whistle. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? One day after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry up yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon, the proud engine, began making his plan to teach Thomas a lesson for teasing him. Almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was... He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next he went onto a turntable thinking of everyone laughing at him. And then he ran onto a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon, now you know what hard work means, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just puffed slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. Maybe I don't have to tease Gordon to feel important, Thomas thought to himself. And he puffed slowly home. Is that right? Is it decent?
One day, Edward was in the shed where he lived with the other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, said Gordon. He wants strong engines like us. But the driver and fireman felt sorry for Edward. Would you like to come out today? Oh, yes, please, said Edward. So they lit his fire, made lots of steam, and Edward puffed away. The other engines were very cross at being left behind. Edward worked hard all day. The coaches thought he was very kind, and the driver was very pleased. I'm going out again tomorrow, Edward told the other engines that night. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Next morning, Edward woke up to find nothing had changed. Gordon was still boasting. You watch me, little Edward, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off to do some shunting. He liked shunting. It was fun playing with freight cars. He would come up quietly and give them a push. Then he would stop and the silly freight cars would go bump into each other. Oh, they cried, whatever is happening? Edward played till there were no more freight cars. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon was cross. Instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a dirty freight train. A freight train, a freight train, a freight train, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it, oh, the shame of it. Edward laughed and went to find some more freight cars. Then there was trouble. Gordon can't get up the hill, the porter called to Edward's driver. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not trying. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy freight cars hold an engine back so. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, replied Edward's driver. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. I'm ready, said Edward. No good, grumbled Gordon. They pulled and pushed as hard as they could. I can't do it! I can't do it! I can't do it! puffed Gordon. I will do it! I will do it! I will do it! puffed Edward. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. And almost before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! he said proudly. He forgot all about kind Edward and didn't say thank you. Edward was left out of breath and far behind, but he was happy because he had been so helpful. At the next station, he found that the driver and fireman were very pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink, and the driver said, I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a beautiful coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the shed. Be careful, Henry. You're not pulling the flying kipper now. Mind you, keep on the rails today. Gordon was resting in the siding. Sometimes he thought, It's really tiring to be such a large and splendid engine. One does have to keep up appearances so. Beep, 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 beep. Hello, lazy bones, whistled Henry. What cheek, spluttered Gordon. 
That Henry is too big for his wheels. Fancy speaking to me like that. Me, who has never had an accident. Aren't jammed whistles and burnt safety valves accidents? Asked Percy innocently. No, indeed. High spirits. Might happen to any engine. But to come off the rails like Henry did, well, I ask you, is that right? Is it decent? Then it was Henry's turn to take the express. Gordon watched him getting ready. Be careful, Henry. You're not pulling the flying kipper now. Mind you, keep on the rails today. Henry went off in a huff, and Gordon yawned and went to sleep. But not for long. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming, and we're to pull it. Is it coaches or freight cars? Cars, said his driver. Cars, said Gordon. <laughs> Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go! I won't go! grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly! Don't be silly! puffed Edward. At last, Gordon was on the turntable. The movement had shaken his fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Whoosh, he hissed. Get me out, get me out. Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned Sir Topham Hatt. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch? What's that you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please, and, and Gordon, leave him where he is. We'll get him out later. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Oh, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end, and James and Henry, pulling hard, managed to bring him to safety. Late that night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine. Get me out! Get me out! On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Those little demons! One day, Thomas was at the junction when Gordon shuffled in with some freight cars. remarked Thomas. What a funny smell. Can you smell a smell? I can't smell a smell, said Annie. A funny, musty sort of smell, said Thomas. No one noticed it till you did, grunted Gordon. It must be yours. Not long ago, he had fallen into a dirty ditch. Thomas enjoyed teasing him about it. Annie, Clarabelle, do you know what I think it is? It's ditch water. 
Before Gordon could answer, Thomas puffed away. Annie and Clarabel could hardly believe their ears. He's dreadfully rude. I feel quite ashamed. I feel quite ashamed. He's dreadfully rude. And to Thomas they said, You mustn't be rude. You make us ashamed. But Thomas didn't care a bit. That was funny. That was funny, he chuckled. He felt very pleased with himself. Annie and Clarabel were deeply shocked. They had great respect for Gordon, the big engine. Thomas left the coaches at the station and went off to a mine for some cars. Long ago, miners digging for lead had made tunnels under the ground. Their roofs are strong enough to hold up cars, but not the weight of engines. A large notice warns them not to enter the area. Danger! Engines must not pass this board. Silly old board, thought Thomas. He had often tried to pass it, but had never succeeded. But this morning he had made a plan. The fireman went to throw the switch. Now for my plan, thought Thomas. Bumping the cars fiercely, he jerked his driver off the footplate and followed them into the siding. Come back, yelled his driver. Fire and smoke, said Thomas. I'm sunk. And he was. Oh dear, he said, I am a silly engine. And a very naughty one, too. I saw you, said Sir Topham Hatt. Please get me out. I won't do it again. I'm not sure. We can't lift you out with a crane. The ground's not firm enough. Hmm, let me see. I wonder if Gordon could pull you out. Yes, sir, said Thomas. But he didn't want to meet Gordon just yet. Down a mine, is he? <laughs> laughed Gordon. What a joke! Whoop, whoop. Little Thomas, we'll have you out in a couple of puffs. Strong cables were fastened between the two engines. Are you ready? He It was a lot harder than they all thought. At last, Thomas was free. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Thomas. That's all right, Thomas. You made me laugh, replied Gordon. I'm in disgrace. So am I, said Thomas. Why, so you are, Thomas. Shall we form an alliance? You help me and I'll help you. Right you are, agreed Thomas. Good, that's settled, rumbled Gordon. And buffer to buffer, the Allies puffed home. Now, if I had two tenders, said Gordon, I wouldn't need to stop so often, and I wouldn't have to listen to silly little engines. Gordon was cross. Why should Henry have a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off, leaving us to do his work, and comes back saying how happy he feels. It's disgraceful. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Poor Henry didn't feel happy anymore. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. I like your whistling. Goodbye, Henry, called Gordon. We're glad to have you with us again, but remember what I said. Later, Henry stopped at Edward's station. Hello, Henry, said Edward. You look splendid. I was pleased to hear your happy whistle yesterday. Thank you, Edward, smiled Henry. Shh. Can you hear something? 
It sounds like Gordon, said Edward, and it ought to be Gordon, but Gordon never whistled like that. It was Gordon. He came rushing down the hill at a tremendous rate. He didn't look at Henry, and he didn't look at Edward. He screamed straight through the station and disappeared. Well, said Edward. It isn't wrong, chuckled Henry, but we just don't do it. And he told Edward what Gordon had said. Meanwhile, Gordon screeched along the line. The noise was awful. At the station, everyone covered their ears. Sir Topham Hatt covered his ears, too. Take him away, he bellowed, and stop that noise. Gordon puffed sadly away, but he wouldn't stop whistling until two fitters climbed up and knocked his whistle valve in place. That night, Gordon slunk into the shed. He was glad it was empty. It isn't wrong, murmured Henry to no one in particular, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. Next morning, Henry was enjoying himself enormously. I feel so well, I feel so well, he sang. Trickety truck, trickety truck, hummed his coaches. Then he saw some boys on a bridge. Beep, beep, hello, he whistled. Oh, he called. The boys didn't wave and take his number. They thought it fun to drop stones on him instead. They've broken our glass! They've broken our glass! cried the coaches. The passengers weren't hurt, but they were cross. Call the police! No, said the driver. Leave it to Henry and me. What will you do? they asked. Can you keep a secret? Yes, yes. Well then, said the driver, Henry is going to sneeze at those boys. Lots of people were waiting at the station just before the bridge. They wanted to see what would happen. Henry has plenty of ashes, said the driver. Please keep all windows shut till we've passed the bridge. Henry's as excited as we are, aren't you, old fellow? Henry felt more stuffed up than excited. Soon they could see the boys, and they all had stones. Are you ready, Henry? said the driver. Sneeze hard when I tell you. Now, he said. Achoo! Well done, Henry, laughed his driver. Henry went home, hoping that next time he saw Gordon and the boys, they would have learned not to be so mean. No one noticed it till you did, grunted Gordon. It must be yours. Thomas's branch line is important and so is Edward's. But their track and bridges are not so strong as those on the main line. So Topham Hat does not allow the heavier main line engines like Gordon to run on them. But one day, the way Gordon was talking, you would have thought Sir Topham Hatt had given this order for quite another reason. It's not fair, grumbled Gordon. What isn't fair, asked Edward. Letting branch line diesels pull main line trains. Never mind, Gordon. I'm sure Boko will let you pull his freight cars sometimes. Gordon spluttered. I won't pull Boko's dirty cars. I won't run on branch lines. Why not? It would be a nice change. Sir Topham Hatt would never approve, huffed Gordon. Branch lines are vulgar. Gordon puffed away. Edward chuckled and followed him to the station. Every evening, the two engines pull two fast trains from the station. Gordon always leaves first with an express for the main line. Edward follows five minutes later with his train for the branch line.
Usually, everything runs like clockwork. But tonight, there was trouble. A lady in a green floppy hat was saying goodbye to a friend. It was nearly time for Gordon to start. The fireman looked back towards the conductor's van and saw something green waving. Right away, mate. He thought the conductor had waved his flag. Gordon started, leaving luggage, his passengers, and the conductor all standing on the platform. Everyone was very surprised and cross. To make matters worse, by the time Gordon had been stopped and brought back, Edward was already late with his train. So now he set off first. But the signalman at the junction wasn't told about the change. By mistake, he sent Edward along the main line. Gordon was sent along the branch and arrived cold and cross on one of the sidings near the harbor. Next morning, Bill and Ben peeped into the yard. There were no cars for them, but they didn't mind that. Teasing Gordon would be much better fun. What's that? asked Bill. Shh, whispered Ben. It's Gordon. It looks like Gordon. But it can't be. Gordon never comes on the branch lines. He thinks them vulgar. Gordon pretended he hadn't heard them. If it isn't Gordon, said Ben, it's just a pile of old iron, which we'd better take to the scrapyard. No, Bill, this lot's useless for scrap. We'll take it to the harbor and dump it in the sea. Gordon was alarmed. I am Gordon. Stop! Stop! When Boko suddenly arrived, Gordon thought him the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. Boko, my dear engine, save me! Boko quickly sized up the situation and threatened to take away the cars he had brought for Bill and Ben. This made the twins behave at once. Gordon thought Boko was wonderful. Those little demons, how do you do it? Ah, well, said Boko, it's just a knack. Gordon still believes that Boko saved his life, but we know the twins were only teasing, don't we? Ha! <laughs> said Gordon. What's this? Educating Gordon Day? One morning, Thomas was being cleaned when Gordon arrived. Mud had blown all over his smart blue paint. Hello, Gordon, called Thomas. You look as if you've had a mud bath. Be a sensible engine and have a shower instead. Gordon snorted. I haven't time to dawdle over my appearance like fussy tank engines do. The wind blew stronger. Gordon, slow down, called his driver. This made Gordon crosser still. Now I'll be dirty and late, dirty and late, he hissed. At the next station was a sign, all trains must wash down daily. James had just finished being cleaned. Come on, Gordon, said his driver. You'll feel better, too, after a good hose down. Bah, said Gordon, and angrily let off steam. You're a very naughty engine, said Gordon's driver. Now James will need another shower. You'll have to wait your turn till later. Good riddance, huffed Gordon. I'm far too busy to waste time with water. He finished his journey safely and steamed into the big station. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. So were Gordon's coaches and the passengers. Goodness gracious, said Sir Topham Hatt. You can't pull the train. Henry will have to do it. Gordon, you'd better get cleaned straight away. Gordon was soon being washed. Mind my eyes, he grumbled. Then he pulled cars for the rest of the day. Freight trains, freight trains, he spluttered. He felt his position deeply. That's for you, and you, and you. Cars will be cars, laughed James. 
They won't with me, snorted Gordon. I'll teach them. James got ready to take the express when Gordon returned. Be careful, warned Gordon. The hills are slippery. You may need help. I don't need help on hills, replied James huffily. Gordon thinks he knows everything. Earlier, a storm had swept Gordon's hill, blowing leaves onto the tracks, which made them slippery. Even though the storm had passed, the hill was still difficult to climb. James knew this. The signal showed clear, and James began to go faster. I'll do it, I'll do it, he puffed. Halfway up, he was not so sure. I must do it, I must do it. But his wheels slipped on the leaves. He couldn't pull the train at all. Help, help, whistled James. His wheels were turning forward, but the heavy coaches pulled him backwards. The whole train started slipping down the hill. His driver shut off steam and put on the brakes. Then carefully, he stopped the train. Gordon saw everything. Ah, well, we live and learn. Never mind, little James. I'm going to push behind. Clouds of smoke and steam billowed from the snorting engines as they struggled up the hill. We can do it, puffed James. We will do it, puffed Gordon. At last, they reached the top. Beep, beep. Thank you. Goodbye, whistled James. Boop, boop answered Gordon. Goodbye. That night, Sir Topham Hatt came to see the engines. Gordon was miserable. Please, sir, said Thomas, can Gordon pull coaches again now? If you understand that having a washdown is essential to every engine, then yes, Gordon, you may. Thank you, grunted Gordon. Dirty or clean, I'm a famous machine. But no one heard but him. It's only a cow. Shoo! Shoo! One morning, Gordon was in the yard taking on a large supply of coal. That's the third load of coal you've had today, Gordon, said James. Some might say you're being rather greedy. I'm an important engine, replied Gordon. Important engines need plenty of coal, but I doubt if you would understand that, James. James snorted and went about his work. Later, Gordon was taking on water from a standpipe because the water tower was under repair. I wouldn't drink too much of that water if I were you, Gordon. It might give you boiler ache. Pah, said Gordon. What's this, educating Gordon Day? First James, now you, duck. Big engines have big needs. Little engines are just annoying. Don't say I didn't warn you, laughed Duck. Later, Gordon steamed into the yard at the big station. That's what I need, exclaimed Gordon. There, emerging out of the sheds, were two shiny tenders. Now, if I had two tenders, said Gordon, I wouldn't need to stop so often, and I wouldn't have to listen to silly little engines. Those tenders belong to a visitor, replied his driver. Diesel sidled up alongside. Everyone knows the tenders are a mark of distinction, but I'm afraid that no amount of tenders will save you in the end. We diesels are taking over, and we don't need tenders to make us important, not even one. Gordon was most upset. He was feeling just the same next day. I'm not happy. I know, said Duck. It's boiler ache. It's not boiler ache, protested Gordon. It's... Of course it is, interrupted Henry. That water's bad. Have a good washout. Then you'll feel a different engine. Your boiler must be full of sludge. Don't be vulgar, huffed Gordon. He backed down onto his train, hissing mournfully. Cheer up, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt. I can't, sir. Is it true what Diesel says, sir? What does he say? 
That diesels are taking over. Don't worry, Gordon. That will never happen on my railway. One more thing, sir. Why did the visitor have two tenders? Because he lives on a railway with long distances between coaling depots. Gordon felt better. But Henry started complaining. He banged some cars angrily. I always work hard enough for two, he puffed. I deserve another tender. Duck whispered something to Donald. He was going to play a trick on Henry. Henry, he asked, would you like my tenders? Yours? What have you got to do with tenders? All right, said Duck. The deal's off. Would you like them, Donald? I wouldn't deprive you of the honor, replied Donald. It is a great honor, continued Duck thoughtfully, but I'm only a tank engine. Perhaps James might... I'm sorry I was rude, said Henry hastily. How many tenders have you, and when could I have them? Uh, hmm. I have six, and you can have them this evening. Six lovely tenders, chortled Henry. What a splendid sight I'll be. Henry was excited all day. Do you think it will be all right? He asked for the umpteenth time. Of course, said Duck. They're all ready now. The other engines waited where they could each get a good view. But Henry wasn't a splendid sight at all. His six tenders were very old, dirty, and filled with boiler sludge. Had a good washout, Henry, called a voice. That's right. You'll feel a different engine now. Henry was not sure, but he thought the voice belonged to Gordon. I'm not happy. I'm in disgrace. The shame of it. The shame of it. Oh, the shame of it. Early one morning, Gordon's fire would not light. I don't know what's wrong, sighed the firelighter. There must be gremlins about. What are gremlins? asked Percy. I've heard that they're little green men who play tricks, replied Thomas. Can we find one? Pa, said James. Gremlins don't exist. They're just an excuse when things go wrong. If Firelighter says there are gremlins, there are. Ha, snorted James. Sir Topham Hatt had heard everything. Silence, he said. I am expecting a VIP, a very important person today. She has heard that all my engines are really useful. Please prove it. Yes, sir, they all said. As long as the gremlins let us. What gremlins? The ones in Gordon's fire, sir. That's why he's not ready yet. I'll see about that, thundered Sir Topham Hatt. And he did. Gordon, I expect you to be on your best behavior today. You were to pull the special coach for my special visitor. But no high speeds, please. She won't like that. Gordon was proud and pleased. He was waiting for his special coach when Percy puffed in with some freight cars. What's the matter, Gordon? You're late. Driver says there's gremlins in the turntable, replied Gordon. They must be everywhere, squeaked Percy. At last, the turntable was mended, and Gordon puffed away with the special coach. He was soon working hard to make up for lost time. After he arrived at the station, Sir Topham Hatt became concerned. Where's Thomas? he wondered. He's supposed to be bringing my visitor from the docks. Huh, huffed Gordon. Thomas isn't really useful if he's late. But it wasn't long before Thomas arrived. I'm sorry. A cow strayed on the line and we had to wait for the farmer to take her away. But driver says your visitor is here safe and sound. Indeed she is, smiled Sir Topham Hatt. How nice to see you. Who is it? whispered Percy. I don't know, replied Thomas. But Sir Topham Hatt is certainly keen to please her. He's arranged a special party for her. She's got a dog as well, said Percy. Ruff. Come on, Thomas, said the driver. You need a drink. Pa, puffed Gordon. Thomas is just a lazy little engine. Sir Topham Hatt is expecting me to arrive on time. We're late because of Thomas. Gordon's driver decided to make up for lost time. Then there was trouble. 
I think we'd better slow down. This is an old line and could make things uncomfortable for the VIP. And it did. She was taking a bath and the water was slopping all over the place. Oh! She cried. Gordon was very relieved to reach his final destination, where Thomas was waiting to collect Sir Topham Hatt and his special visitor. He blew an extra long whistle. This frightened the visitor's dog so much that he fled from the station and ran into a field where a bull was grazing. The bull frightened the little dog even more. He ran back again, onto the platform and over the bridge. He didn't stop until he jumped straight into Thomas's cab. But he had a wonderful ride all the way to the docks. What's the dog's name? asked the fireman. Well, after today's events, I think I'll rename him Gremlin, Sir Topham Hatt chuckled. In that case, I've met one at last. Ha <laughs> ha! Excuse me, sir. But who was your very important visitor? Why, didn't I tell you? This lady is my mother, and she agrees with me. You are indeed really useful engines, and my mother, of course, is always right. <laughs> Mind my eyes, he grumbled. Edward was getting old. His bearings were worn, and he clanked as he puffed along. He was taking empty cattle cars to a market town. The sun shone, birds sang. But Edward was heading for trouble. Come on, come on, he puffed. Oh, oh, screamed the cars. Edward puffed and clanked. The cars rattled and screamed. Some cows were grazing nearby. They were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. As Edward clanked by, they broke through the fence and ran across the line. A coupling was broken and some cars were left behind. Edward felt a jerk, but didn't take much notice. He was used to cattle cars. Bother those cars, he thought. Why can't they come quietly? He was at the next station before either he or his driver realized what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and boasted. Fancy allowing cows to break your train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them. Old Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward. They've never met cows. I have, and I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Edward's station. Boop, boop! Mind the cows! Hurry, hurry, puffed Gordon. Don't make such a fuss! Don't make such a fuss, grumbled his coaches. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so, too. Whoa, Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Said Gordon, it's only a cow. Shoo! Shoo! He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Bleh! She said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off! Be off! Bleh. Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's conductor told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, looking for her mother. Percy will take her along.
At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it secret, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines, afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. Freight trains, freight trains, a freight train, a freight train, a freight train. I can't do it. I'm not happy. It was a sunny day on the island of Sodor and all the engines were working hard. Gordon was feeling very excited. Morning, Thomas. I look my best, and you know why? Why? Because the Duke and Duchess are visiting. Sir Topham Hatt will be choosing me as their special engine. Ha! puffed Thomas. After Gordon had been washed and polished, he rushed away to meet the visitors. But a signal diverted Gordon into a siding. He was very upset. I'm going to be late, he muttered. A huge engine rocketed by. Steaming pistons, who's that? Gordon soon found out. When he arrived at the shed, the huge engine was humming quietly. <laughs> Who are you? This is Spencer. He's the fastest engine in the world. Mm-hmm. Huh. But secretly, Gordon was impressed. I'm the Duke and Duchess's private engine. I take them everywhere. There will be a party for the Duke and Duchess at Marin Station. That's far away over Gordon's Hill. You'll need to take on plenty of water, muttered Gordon. I have plenty of water, wished Spencer, and he raced away. I was only trying to be useful, grunted Gordon. Spencer showed the Duke and Duchess many beautiful places. But he never once stopped to take on more water. Gordon and Thomas were collecting passengers when Spencer raced through on his way to the party. Don't forget the water! Who cares? He'll be in trouble soon, sighed Thomas. And Spencer was. He ran out of water on Gordon's Hill. Why didn't I listen? Sir so Topham Hatt soon heard the news. I'll send Gordon, he boomed. When Gordon arrived, the station master was waiting. You need to rescue Spencer. He's stuck on the hill. Hurry, Gordon, said his driver. Gordon was looking forward to seeing Spencer. Run out of water, he teased. Yes, snapped Spencer. I must have a leaky tank. Perhaps, smiled Gordon, but we better hurry. Everyone is waiting. Gordon switched to Spencer's line and was coupled up. Then they set off.
See? said Gordon. We're right on time. But Spencer was embarrassed. So what do you think of Spencer now? Thomas whispered. Too much puff and not enough steam. Well done, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt. You are the fastest engine on Sodor. I know that, muttered Gordon. I can't do it! I can't do it! I can't do it! puffed Gordon. Sir Topham Hatt's engines are proud of how useful they are. It makes them feel important, but none of them feels more important than Gordon. Watch out, Gordon wished. You'll get my paint all sooty. Pulling freight cars is a sooty job, teased Salty, but then you wouldn't know. Of course not, Gordon huffed importantly. Express engines don't pull freight cars. It wouldn't be dignified. Dingy fried, puzzled Percy. What's that? Dignified, Gordon corrected. It means, it means that someone's too big for his buffers, teased Salty. Pa, said Gordon, and he puffed away. That evening, fog covered the island of Sodor. Everything slowed down, and soon the docks were packed with waiting freight cars. This caused confusion and delay. Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. He was in a great hurry. Henry, Thomas, and Percy, he said. You must go to the docks immediately. Yes, sir, they whistled. Then Sir Topham Hatt turned to the big blue engine. You too, Gordon, he said. I need a big engine to take the freight cars where they won't be in the way. Freight cars, huffed Gordon. He could not believe what he had heard. Gordon wasn't happy to be pulling freight cars. He waited impatiently while they were shunted into place. Hurry up, hurry up, chuffed Gordon crossly. Why the rush, Gordon, asked Thomas. If I must pull freight cars, then I'll show Salty how an express engine pulls freight cars, Gordon huffed. Careful, Captain. Salty tooted. You don't want to get too big for your buffers. But Gordon ignored Salty. The next morning, Gordon raced along with his heavy load. Now this is how you pull freight cars, he puffed. But the signalman had accidentally left the points switched to the branch line. Gordon rattled through the junction. That's strange. I'm on the branch line. Oh no, the signalman cried. Express trains aren't supposed to go that way. It was too late. Gordon had already raced into the distance. The old branch line was weak and rusty. There were signs warning all the trains to go slow. But Gordon ignored the signs. I'm an express engine, I don't go slow, he said, and he went even faster. The branch line couldn't take his weight, and the rails buckled. Oh, help, Gordon cried as he slid off the tracks and into a field. No one was hurt, but poor Gordon felt very undignified. What will Sir Topham Hatt say, he groaned. He found out soon enough. Well, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt, you wanted to show Salty a thing or two, and you've certainly done that. You've shown him how silly it is to ignore go-slow signs. Sorry, sir, said Gordon, and he let out a sad whoosh of steam. Gordon was soon repaired and back at the docks ready for work, but he was very unhappy with himself. Everyone makes mistakes, said Thomas, even you. Salty's sorry he teased you, puffed James. And I'm sorry I was too big for my buffers, chuffed Gordon. And all the engines gave a jolly toot, even Gordon. 
Now, if I had two tenders, said Gordon, I wouldn't need to stop so often, and I wouldn't have to listen to silly little engines. Gordon the big engine and Thomas the tank engine puffed buffer to buffer back home. It had been a busy day. First, Thomas had teased Gordon about the time that the big engine had slid into a ditch. Then Thomas fell down a mine and Gordon came to his rescue. Remember, Thomas, called Gordon grandly. United we stand, together we fall. You help me, and I'll help you. I'll remember, replied Thomas, but I hope Sir Topham Hatt forgives us soon. Suddenly, they noticed something. As the two engines whistled into the sheds, everywhere they looked, they saw paint pots and painters. Bust my buffers, said Thomas. What's happening? Shh, whispered Percy. Sir Topham Hatt's going to tell us now. Ladies and gentlemen and engines, I am honored to inform you that Her Majesty the Queen herself is coming here to visit us. Now, on with the preparations. The engines wondered who would pull the royal train. I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward. I'm in disgrace, sighed Gordon. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James. You, snorted Henry, you can't climb hills. He will ask me to pull the train, and I'll have a new coat of paint. Then the rain came. Henry's driver and fireman covered up their cab to keep dry. A painter was on the ladder above the line. Henry's smoke blew high into the air. The painter couldn't see. Both he and the paint pot fell all over Henry. Poor Henry. Well, you're not a pretty picture, sneered the painter. Sir Topham Hatt spoke next. You look like an iced cake, Henry. That won't do for the royal train. I must make other arrangements. Gordon and Thomas were waiting for him. Please, Please sir. sir. One at a time, replied Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, Gordon? May Thomas have his branch line again? Hmm. I think you are both sorry and deserve a treat. Edward will go in front to clear the line. Thomas will look after the coaches, and Gordon will pull the train. The great day came. All the engines worked hard, bringing people to the town. Thomas sorted out their coaches in the yard. Edward steamed in. Beep! The Queen is here! Then Gordon whistled as he approached the station. Everyone knew that sound. The Queen's train glided into the station. Gordon was spotless and his brass shone brightly. Sir Topham Hatt stood to attention. Welcome, ma'am. The Queen thanked him for a splendid run and asked to see all the engines. Beep, beep, whistled Toby and Percy. Shh, hissed Henry and James. But Toby and Percy didn't care. Three cheers for the Queen. Beep, beep, whistled the engines. When it was time to leave, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches. Then to Edward, and finally to Gordon, who took her away. No engines ever felt prouder than those on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Ha! said Gordon. What's this? Educating Gordon Day? First James, now you, duck. Big engines have big needs. Little engines are just annoying. Respect for Gordon. The engines of the Sodor Railway were always busy. 
Thomas puffed to the beaches with happy vacationers. And Gordon proudly pulled the express. Gordon thought he was the strongest, fastest, and cleanest engine on the whole of the railway. But one thing bothered him. His firebox rattled as it cooled down at night. Gordon knew his rattle stopped the other engines from getting to sleep. That night, Gordon's firebox went click, clunk, click, clunk. Thomas and Percy started to chuckle. Rattler Gordon's keeping us all awake, peeped Percy. The only engines keeping other engines awake, huffed Gordon crossly, are little engines with very bad manners. But secretly, he felt rather embarrassed. In the morning, Percy teased Gordon again. Rattlebox is awake at last, he puffed out loud. Gordon ignored Percy. He did not like being called names. I'm the strongest and the best, he told himself. Strongest and best, strongest and best, cleanest and fastest and pull the express. He wished the other engines would remember that. Later, Gordon pulled into Knapford Station. Oh, look, laughed Emily. Rattler Gordon's here. He's pulling the Click Clunk Express. This made Gordon very cross indeed, especially because Diesel overheard. I hope your Click Clunk gets better soon, oil diesel. <laughs> See you later, Rattler. Gordon was very cross indeed. He decided it was time the other engines learnt to treat him properly. So later, at the water tank, he pulled up ahead of James. <gasps> James was surprised. At Knapford, Percy had brought Gordon's coaches into number one platform. Off you go now, Percy, said Gordon. Number one is my platform. Little engines shouldn't hang around. You're a boastful, bossy, big blue boiler, Percy muttered to himself crossly. Later, Gordon told his friends to give a polite toot toot whenever they saw him. But why? asked Thomas. He was very puzzled. Because, huffed Gordon grandly, I'm the strongest and the best. And he steamed away. You can toot at him if you like, wished Emily, but I'm not going to. Gordon steamed across the island. He felt very pleased with himself. He was sure the other engines would forget his clunk click and treat him properly now. He saw Emily coming. He listened for her toot toot. But Emily didn't toot at all. This made Gordon very cross. He was so cross that he didn't see the signal telling him to stop. And he didn't see the goods train ahead until it was too late. Luckily, no one was hurt. But Gordon came off the rails and he was covered in gooey red jelly. Oh. As Gordon waited to be put back on the rails, Percy arrived. Hello, Gordon, Pete Percy. I see you're not the cleanest engine anymore. Then James puffed up. I don't think you'll be pulling the express for a while, Gordon, joked James. Finally, Thomas arrived. Gordon's a mess, Gordon's a mess, he's the largest and jelliest, puffed Thomas cheekily. At last, Gordon was back on the rails. He felt very foolish indeed. Edward pushed him to the fitter's yard. Gordon had to stay at the fitter's yard for a long time. It was hard to get the jelly out of his engine. 
Emily and Henry took in turns to pull the express for him. One evening at Tidmouth Sheds, Henry huffed. It's hard work pulling the express. Yes, agreed Emily. Gordon must be very strong to pull the express so fast. I miss Gordon, Peep Percy. I miss having his rattle to go to sleep by. Gordon knew the other engines were pulling the express for him. Thank goodness for Emily and Henry, he thought. I'm sure they're doing a very good job. Finally, Gordon was as good as new. The fitters had even managed to fix the rattle in his firebox. That evening, Gordon had something to say. Is it about being fastest and the best, teased James? Not at all, puffed Gordon. I know my rattle kept you awake at night, and I'm sorry. And I was also silly about the toot toots. I realize now that engines toot toot other engines because they work hard and deserve it, not because they ask for it. But we think you do deserve it, Gordon, said Thomas, because you work hard and you are a really useful engine. All the other engines agreed. Now all the engines greet each other with a cheerful toot toot. For all the hard work they do on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. Down a mine, is he? <laughs> Laughed Gordon. What a joke! Gordon runs dry. It was a hot, sunny day on the island of Sodor. Thomas was making his way to Knapford Station with Annie and Clarabel. Sir Topham Hatt had asked Thomas to work on the main line pulling the local. But first, he needed to fill up his water tank. Gordon was waiting for Percy to bring his coaches so he could pull the express. Where are my coaches? I shouldn't be kept waiting. <laughs> Maybe you should fetch your own coaches, Gordon. Oh, big engines like me don't fetch their own coaches. I pull the express, the most important passenger train on the island of Sodor. Local trains are important, too. Local trains are too slow. They stop at every station. The express only stops at big, important stations. At last, Percy arrived with Gordon's coaches. And Thomas went to the water tower to fill up his tanks. Make way for the express! Paxton was hurrying down from the Blue Mountain Quarry with a big load of stone. He didn't know that Gordon was approaching from the other direction. The signal changed to red just as Paxton was approaching it. He had to stop very quickly. Express coming through! A big stone flew out of one of Paxton's cars and bashed off Gordon's boiler. Sorry, Gordon. Are you okay? That stone gave you a nasty thump. Yes, Paxton, I'm fine. You can't damage a big, strong engine like me so easily. You should be checked for damage, though, Gordon. Nonsense! I have to hurry. The express must not be late. And Gordon hurried on his way, without waiting to be checked over. Gordon hadn't gone very far when his boiler began to run dry. That's funny. I thought I had plenty of water. Luckily, there was a water tower just ahead. I'd better stop and fill up again. But the passengers were not very happy. They didn't want to be late. Gordon hurried on his way as quickly as he could. But he hadn't gone very far when his boiler felt dry again. 
I can't keep stopping for water, or I'll be very late. I must think about something else. So Gordon decided to see how many stations he could think of. Let's see. Tidmouth, Knapford, Crosby, Wellsworth, Marin, Cronk, a lake. Oh! But then he passed the lake. He started to think about needing water for his boiler. Mustn't think about it. Must keep going. This is the express. Next, Gordon passed a stream. He could hear the lovely watery sound. So he whistled very loudly to take his mind off it. But when he came to the next water tower, he had to stop. The passengers were very cross. They were saying they thought this was a fast train, not a slow train. Gordon needed water. His boiler was almost empty. Sit back, everyone. I'll be very fast now. Just you watch. At last, Gordon arrived at Wellsworth Station. He stopped to let passengers on and off. You're running very late today, Gordon. Oh, I'll make up the time, Henry. You'll see. <whistles> But no sooner was Gordon out of the station than his boiler started to feel dry again. I mustn't stop. I mustn't stop. I need to be fast. I need to be fast. Gordon saw another water tower, but this time he didn't stop. Express coming through! Gordon tried to keep himself going. Hurry! Hurry! Express coming through! But he simply didn't have enough steam, and soon he couldn't turn his wheels at all. Thomas was chugging happily along with Annie and Clarabelle when he noticed a wet trail on the track. I wonder what that could be. Then Thomas saw Gordon standing up ahead with the express. What's the matter, Gordon? Why have you stopped here? This isn't a station. I've run out of steam. Ah, you must have a leak in your boiler. I saw a trail of water on the line. A leak in my boiler? How could that happen to a big, strong engine like me? Hello, Thomas. Hello, Gordon. Then Gordon remembered. The stone. Gordon had a hole in his boiler where the stone had bashed him. Oh, the indignity. I should have listened to you, Paxton. I should have been checked over after the stone bashed into me. Well, yes. Don't worry, Gordon. I'll take your passengers. I may not be as fast as you, but I have a full boiler. And I can shunt you to the steamworks, Gordon. I may not be as fast as you, but I am very strong. So Thomas took Gordon's passengers in Annie and Clarabelle and Paxton shunted Gordon's empty coaches onto a siding. Then Paxton tried to push Gordon, but Gordon wouldn't budge. Um, Gordon, have you got your, uh, brakes on? Maybe. Well, take them off, won't you? How can I push you with your brakes on? Gordon was very proud. He didn't want to be pushed. But if Gordon didn't let Paxton push him, he wouldn't be going anywhere at all. Oh. So Gordon took his brakes off and let Paxton push him to the steamworks. 
Everyone was very surprised to see Gordon being shunted along the main line. He wasn't a very fast engine now. Oh, the indignity! Gordon arrived at the steamworks to have his boiler repaired. Soon he looked as good as new. But the other engines still thought it was funny that Gordon had let his boiler run dry. Don't forget to fill your tank up, Gordon. Steam engines need to have water. And uh, watch out for flying stones. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon was not amused. But he was much more careful about looking after his boiler. I won't pull Boko's dirty cars. I won't run on branch lines. Branch lines are vulgar. Gordon was feeling grumpy. This was making James cross. Why are you complaining all the time? Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything. I shall complain whenever I want. You're just a small red engine with ideas above your station. I can't see any, said Percy. Where are they? Any what? Ideas above the station. The sky's empty. Like your smoke box, Percy, laughed James. But Gordon was still grumpy. One day I'll show you just what a big engine can really do. So what can a big engine really do? Not speak to silly little green engines for a start, replied Gordon. Then he puffed away. Later that day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. Gordon, you'll be making one stop today with an empty express to test our new station. You can make up time afterwards. Why can't Henry do it? He likes idling in stations. You will do as you are told. So Gordon did. But he was still unhappy, and he grew sick too. I just can't get up to speed, he moaned. It's time for your visit to the works. Your pipes are clogged, said the fireman. At last, they approached the new station. Gordon was impressed, but his mood soon changed. In front of him was a blank wall and huge buffers. What a boring view. Important engines like me should have a panoramic view, where I can see people and people can see me. And he wished angrily. Gordon was happy when it was time to leave. Now you can really enjoy your run as long as your pipes will let you, said his driver. Come on, come on. I can go faster than this, huffed Gordon. Sick me? Never. But Gordon began to feel more and more feeble. And soon, he came to a complete stop. What happened? His driver and fireman inspected him. Something's broken inside you, Gordon, said his fireman. Now you really will have to go to the works. Gordon was still fuming when James arrived to collect his coaches. Well, 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 so much for knowing about everything. You got too puffed up in your boiler, so it serves you right. When Gordon returned from the works a few days later, he was still boasting. I am the finest engine on the island of Sodor. Probably the finest in the world. Come on, Gordon. We're going to the official opening of the new station. Then there was trouble. As Gordon approached the new station, Neither the driver nor fireman could apply his brakes. Something had jammed. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Help me, please! Well, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt, I knew you wanted a panoramic view, but this is not the way to achieve it. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. When Gordon was repaired again, he took Sir Topham Hatt to the new station. 
for its second official opening. This time he arrived safely, and everyone clapped and cheered as he pulled in. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to him. Your panoramic view is here to stay. I trust you will always see through it from the safety of your own rails. Gordon heartily agreed.